हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे वी बिगिन्स विद द क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ नाइन्थ टेंथ इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ क्रेनियल नव नाइन्थ इट इज द ग्लोसोफेरेन्जियल नव टेंथ वेगस नव इलेवंथ स्पाइनल एसेसरी नव एंड ट्वेल्थ हाइपोग्लोसल नव सो फर्स्ट वी बिगिन्स विद द नाइन्थ क्रेनियल नव एग्जामिनेशन इच इज द ग्लोसोफेरेन्जियल नव इट इज अ मिक्स नव सेंसरी फाइबर्स मोटर फाइबर्स एंड सीक्रेट ऑफ मोटर फाइबर्स सेंसरी फाइबर्स इट कैरिज टेस्ट सेंसेशन फ्रॉम पोस्टेरियर वन थर्ड ऑफ द टंग एंड फेरेंजियल म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन मोटर फाइबर्स टू द स्टाइलो फेरेंजियस मसल एंड सीक्रेट ऑफ मोटर फाइबर्स टू द पेरोटिक लैंड वेन एवर देर इज अ पेरालाइसिस ऑफ द ग्लोसो फेरेंजियल नव द टेस्ट सेंसेशन हैज बीन लॉस्ड एज वेल एज देर इज अ डिक्रीज इन द सलाइवेशन because parotid gland is going to affect how to check glossopharyngeal now check taste sensation from posterior one third of the tongue so you have to check the taste sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue salt sweet sour and bitter all four type of taste you have to check from the posterior one third of the tongue and second it is the palatal reflex now palatal reflex or uh, whatever the level of the cranial nerve or whatever the afferent it is the ninth cranial nerve and efferent it is the tenth cranial nerve afferent via the glossopharyngeal nerve and efferent via the vagus nerve how to elicit the palatal reflex tickle back of the pharynx with swab stick you have to tickle the back of the pharynx with the help of swab stick so what will be the response there will be the reflex contraction of the palatal muscle so this is the palatal reflex and it is going to cover under the clinical examination of the ninth cranial nerve as well as the 10th cranial nerve both the glossopharyngeal nerve and vagus nerve next it is the vagus nerve which is the 10th cranial nerve sensory fibers and motor fibers sensory fibers from the mucous membrane of larynx pharynx soft palate and gastrointestinal tract up to right two third of the transverse colon and motor fibers from the voluntary muscles of larynx pharynx and soft palate and involuntary muscles of heart respiration and gastrointestinal tract up to right two third of the transverse colon so all these are the sensory fibers and motor fibers of the vagus nerve how to check or how to do the clinical examination of the vagus nerve find out whether there is any history of regurgitation or not whether there is any history of regurgitation of the food is present or not and uh, palatal reflex as i explained earlier now check soft palate movement tell subject to open his mouth protrude his tongue and say ah see the movement of palatal arch on the both this side so you have to tell your subject to open his mouth and put the tongue outside of the mouth as far as possible and say ah and you have to see the movement of the palatal arch on the both these sides in normal condition movement of both palatal arch will be equal and they raise upwards but if one side is paralyzed that side remains immobile and flat in normal condition movement of both palatal arch will be equal and they raise upward but if one side is paralyzed that side remains immobile and flat so this is how you have to check the soft palate movement now 11th cranial nerve which is the spinal accessory nerve it is a pure motor nerve and it supplies sternocleidomastoid muscle and trapezius muscle how to check spinal accessory nerve we have to check two muscle power or actions sternocleidomastoid muscle and trapezius muscle so first sternocleidomastoid muscle when both side muscle contract 
देर विल बी द फ्लैक्शन ऑफ द हेड वेन बोथ साइड ऑफ मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट साइमल्टेनियसली सो देर विल बी द फ्लैक्शन ऑफ द हेड एप्लाई रेजिस्टेंस और एप्लाई पैसिव रेजिस्टेंस फ्रॉम चीन एंड टेल सब्जेक्ट टू फ्लैक्स हिज हेड इफ मसल इज पेरेलाइज फ्लैक्शन ऑफ द हेड इज नॉट पॉसिबल हियर फर्स्ट यू हैव टू अप्लाई रेजिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द चीन एंड टेल योर सब्जेक्ट टू फ्लैक्स हिज हेड अगेंस्ट द रेजिस्टेंस इफ मसल इज पेरेलाइज फ्लैक्शन ऑफ द हेड इज नॉट पॉसिबल we checked what will happen when both side of the muscle will contract simultaneously but when one side of the sternocleidomastoid muscle contract chain is rotated to the other side so how we have to check the one side of the sternocleidomastoid muscle action we have to apply passive resistance from other side of the chain and tell subject to move his chain on that side and if muscle is paralyzed rotation of the chain to opposite side is not possible for example you are checking the action of the right side of the sternocleidomastoid muscle then tell your subject to move on the left side while applying pressure from the left side of the chain and check the power of the muscle of the sternocleidomastoid so this is how you are going to check the one side of the sternocleidomastoid muscle action as well as on the both side of the sternocleidomastoid muscle action simultaneously now the second trapezius muscle trapezius and levator scapulae causes elevation of the shoulder so both this muscle trapezius and levator scapulae elevate the shoulder so you have to apply passive resistance to both shoulders from the above and tell subject to raise his shoulders if muscle is paralyzed subject is not able to elevate the shoulder so this is how you have to check the trapezius muscle first you have to apply passive resistance to both shoulders from the above and later you have to tell your subject to raise his shoulders if the muscle is normal both the shoulder will elevate at the normal level but if the muscle is paralyzed it not possible to elevate the shoulder so this is how you have to check the trapezius muscle now the 12th cranial nerve which is the hypoglossal nerve it is a pure motor nerve and it supply all the muscles of the tongue and it helps in the speech articulation and mixing of food and saliva during the chewing so this is the 12th cranial nerve which is the hypoglossal nerve how to check 12th cranial nerve tell subject to open his mouth and protrude his tongue as far as possible see whether tongue is placed centrally or deviate to one side simple you have to tell your subject to open the mouth and protrude the tongue means they have to or subject have to put the tongue outside of the mouth as far as possible in unilateral paralysis tongue will deviate towards the paralyzed side as the right side now supply to the left side and vice versa so the right side of the hypoglossal nerve supplies the left side of the muscle of the tongue and left side of the hypoglossal nerve supplies the right side of the muscles of the tongue so that's why in unilateral paralysis the tongue will deviate towards the paralyzed side if paralysis on both the side the person is not able to protrude the tongue if paralysis is present on both the side then the person will not able to put his tongue outside of the mouth or protrude the tongue check for tongue movement as subject to move his tongue from side to side and lick his cheeks note any abnormal movements if present so this is how you have to check the hypoglossal nerve 